and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Selesnia Knights in Ranked. We're going to start our Rank Up Sunday stream now with a couple of different decks, some of my favorite decks to play. Some, uh, I guess, two, two of my favorites with Abzan Hero, Mono Green, Mid Range. This, of course, is Selesnia, my favorite color combination. You coming up here, Hawkeye? We haven't played Selesnia Knights in a while, uh, but I wanted to play it again. We didn't get to it yesterday, um, so we're got to move to today. But this deck's all about going wide. We're able to have, uh, because we're a Selesnia Knight deck, we're able to play four Knight of Autumn in the main deck, which of course is really good against all the Jun Sacrifice decks, being able to destroy those Witches' Ovens and Trail of Crumbs. But then our deck's all about going wide. We're going to use Worthy Knight to try to make a lot of extra tokens. We have Tristani make extra tokens. Um, we have, uh, you know, Tulsmer gets an extra body out there. Circle of Loyalty makes extra tokens whenever we cast a legendary spell. So that we have we have a lot of legendary spells, as you can see in here. That's kind of like a sub-theme. And, of course, the Great Henge gives us that card advantage and helps us go really long also. Acclaim Contender... Uh, you know, gets to reveal a knight, um, an aura, or a legendary artifact. And so, like, we can take these legendary artifacts or any knight. Um, so, like, these things work really well with Acclaimed Contender. So, yeah, so that's what our deck's all about. We only got 24 lands. Uh, so, sometimes we struggle hitting land drops, but we're basically playing a flower here as, like, a 25th land. So, it's it's kind of like we're playing 25 lands. It's just one of our lands... Um, you know, is, is a flower, so you know you have to spend a mana to go grab it. Bond of Flourishing can help hit a couple of land drops as well. Uh, Paradise Druid adds mana for us. Um, but yeah, there we go. We got an updated sideboard for the current metagame and from what we had previously. And so let's give this a try. So we're going to play traditional standard ranked uh, Selesnia Knights. All right. No, no March of the Multitudes. Because um, March of the Multitudes is basically only good when you already have a wide battlefield to go even more wide, but it doesn't. Like, that's basically when it's at its best. Oh, there's a donation deck just submitted? Oh, I missed that. Okay. From Absolute Wild, we got some Simic Ramp. All right, let's give this a try. So, Absolute, when would you when when do you want your Simic Ramp deck played? What day? What time slot? Everything's open. So, good chance that Fable Passage means Jun Sacrifice. Yep, I stream tomorrow. From 3, you know, regular time from 3 to 10. Yeah, first, second, third, fourth slot, whichever slot. Gruel. Well, against Gruul, Knight of Autumn's not going to be as good, but Conclave Ca Cavalier is going to be better. Conclave Cavalier is an awesome card against Questing Beast, you know, because it just trades with Questing Beast being a 4 4, and then you're left with a couple of 2 2s. Hawkeye's getting those scratches. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Yep, and Knight of Autumn can't take out Number Cleave, so I should probably wait and and see if that card comes down. Yep, I'll flip. Yep, that's that's the link right there. And then there's also um, a donate section. Yeah, that, that says, and it's just the if you just click the 
banner that says donate. That's the link. Um. My days went really good. Yeah, it's, I got a ton done earlier before the stream. Had some some busy days here recently. This Conclave Cavalier has been awesome. And yeah, my opponent is struggling with land drops. It's made it easier for me, certainly. I just play that before I attack because they could kill Worthy Knight. I didn't really count it up if it was lethal or not. No, it's not lethal. They could go to one. Oh boy. So four mana, five five vigilant. Whenever it dies, you put two three threes into play. That's pretty good. All right, so glass casket seems like exactly what we want against Gruul. Same with Conclave Tribunal. Um, as far as what to cut. I got a couple of great henge. Hmm. Do I cut the circle of loyalty? Okay. We got to cut four more cards. Like Cavalier of Dawn, still good in this matchup. Tristani's good. I'm maybe I don't know. Maybe we could take out a Tristani. I mean, I guess Tristani's. Hmm. You think cut tribunal? Just go with glass casket. I'll play two Tribunal. We'll trim one Tristani, and then I should probably cut. I'll cut a Knight of Autumn. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have the explosive damage potential like Embercleave with this kind of deck, but with the Great Henge you can go really wide and you can get a lot of card advantage and especially with um, with a claimed contender that finds the Great Henge more reliably you can get a lot of a lot of card advantage So Worthy Knight's like my better card to play here. If they don't have, if they didn't have Bone Crusher Giant, I'd want to play Worthy Knight. But I am scared of Bone Crusher Giant, like how they just, like you know, these two lands pass. Like they could just, I play Worthy Knight, they stomp it, then they play Bone Crusher and draw a card. And I'm worried about that. Hmm. 
Like, I'm pretty fine with them putting the edge wall in, or putting the Embercleave on the innkeeper. Okay. Keepers, okay. So the problem is the problem is that they have a questing beast with me using that conclave tribunal. I hope not. Uh, well, that's also annoying. Yeah, but innkeeper kind of just always has to go. Yeah, they don't have a questing beast, but I do. Glad we took that Ember Cleave. All right, good job, Hawkeye. We are one and zero. <laughs> Opponent dead before questing beast animation. Yeah. Good job, okay. All right, another hand of double worthy knight on turn three. And we're on the draw again. On the draw again. We don't get to play first because we're on the draw again. <laughs> do I really have to attack? Why do we all fight? Question beast. Well, same matchup. Their hand's a lot better this time. They got Questing Beast.
Yeah, of course, if they have Ember Cleave, I'm, I'm going to die. They're going to just try to stabilize with the other stuff that's in play. I would like to draw a land. Yay. Animation does take a, a while. got a backup or if they got a backup beast I hope not Cavalier is my best card, like, right now, but I think as far as, like, over, you know, like, over multiple turns, this Great Henge is what can win me this game. We did put four spells down to the bottom with the, you know, the Acclaim Contender. Like, all five cards that it looked were, like, none of them were lands. They're all spells, so. Right, there we go. Alright, so we brought in all these glass caskets. The Conclave Tribunals actually looked good, too. I kind of want to play all those. Maybe I'll trim a Bond of Flourishing, trim one Knight, one Tristani, two Great Henge, and maybe we just play three Tribunal. Could cut another Knight of Autumn. I'll go three Tribunal. Night of Autumn matches up pretty well against Questing Beast, too. No, I would have gone Caval. I would have shocked in for Cavalier. Um, but those those two cards did protect against Questing Beast that turn, but they didn't beat like an Ember Cleave. And I don't know, these other the other cards can maybe beat Number Cleave.
<laughs> Life's too short to play against good cards. <laughs> Magic's only fun when playing against bad cards. Yeah, Gideon is for the matchups of people playing sweepers and trying to destroy all the creatures, so it can be a threat that's not just a creature that you can play on turn three. Get out of here, innkeeper. All right, so now if I if I double block Love Struck Beast, they can even just t pump it into a six five with the Castle Umbreth. They can do that. Collector is kind of annoying. Well, hoping they don't have Embercleave. Yay. Very good hand for the opponent. Very good hand. Yeah. It's better. Wish I would have kept um, kept the two creatures now instead of the one. Oh come on! <laughs> so back to back draws, requesting Beast Embercleave. Gosh, yeah, that's just an awesome hand. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I was thinking they still had the castle to activate. But yeah, they didn't have the castle anymore. My brain didn't didn't update. So, yeah, I should have had the 4-3 and the 2-2 two -two block. It turned out we were still going to be dead because of the Ember Cleave. But, yes, I should have. I could have made a better block there.
Well, we'll see how this does. I would like to stop drawing lands. Not the, not the best. Yeah, glass casket's awesome. I'm glad we have all four in our sideboard in which we would draw more than zero last game and won this game. Can I just... Can I stop curving out perfectly? Just stop. More lands for me. All right, so we went one and one against Gruul. Two games of them having it all. <laughs> Unfortunately, opponent was an Egyptian pharaoh in the past life. Yeah, I mean, with, when Gruul curves out perfectly, they just beat everything in the format. Like that's that's the thing about their deck. their curve tops everything else. It's just they, they don't really have the ability to come back if they stumble at all. And there's no stumbling. Quote unquote, his job as an oracle in ancient Greek in his past life because it was too predictable. Alright, third straight curve out deck. Now we got Rakdos. Yeah, with Black Lance Paragon, I can't block Fervent Champion. I basically just have to have... I'm basically going to have, like, Contender trade with Bone Crusher Giant. And doesn't get to block the other stuff. Play a Questing Beast to trade with their one drop.
And now we'll have Castle Ardenvale make some 1-1s. One -ones. Now we have four extra mana, we want to find Questing Beast. If I had five mana, I would have taken the Cavalier if I could have cast Cavalier. Wow, they didn't upkeep, stop, and cast the Murderous Rider? Well, that would have killed me. Glad they didn't do that. So that's why I didn't just attack with the questing beast because I wanted to make them discard their card. I attack, they block, they don't have to discard their card. If I if I don't attack, they discard their card. Turned out it was Murderous Rider, which they should have killed my 4-4. Four four. <laughs> Stop drawing stuff. Draw some lands. Ugh. All right, so we got two devout decrees to pair up with the four glass caskets now. Not sure if I want. Not sure if I want Conclave Tribunal with this matchup. Their threats are cheaper. Um, we're at 62 right now. Knight of Autumn is maybe my next card to take out. Knight of Autumn, Conclave Tribunal. I'm going to keep these three five drops and, and one Great Henge. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll show you Flip. Um, Could just be Paradise Druid. Take out one Druid one night. So I don't want to take out too many. Like, I still want to make sure a Claim Contender can, like, one, draw stuff, and then two, we have Knights in play to, to trigger a Claim Contender. Well, this hand would be very good if it wasn't double Blossoming Sands, but this is your. Like these are these are the phases, these things here, and so you click this to stop on upkeep and draw step. And you can do that for the opponent as well. You can stop on their upkeep or their end step. Or one of their main phases.
Oh, ab absolute lava. Are you, are you in here still? Did you tell me what, what slot you want tomorrow for the Simic ramp deck? If so, I, did, I didn't write it down. And I didn't see it if you did. Oh, they can't cast Stomp. Okay, he said any slot is fine. Okay. Sure. So yes, yeah, so that's that's exactly what I thought. I thought they would be going with the Embercleave here and wanting to Embercleave the Black Lance Paragon. And so I thought I had a free a free removal spell, or you know, basically using the Worthy Knight to block the one one. And it looks like that was the case. I'm gonna just you play Tulsimer here just to use my mana better, instead of just playing Glass Casket. Even though, you know, we could have saved our 3-3 by playing a Glass Casket. Yeah, ember everywhere. So it definitely has been. So yeah, it looks like Black Lance Paragon. Could be Bone Crusher Giant.
I don't don't think they'll have lethal even so even if they play a black lance paragon here and then untap and equip with ember cleave um and have rimrock knight and then make it six power double strike thanks i'll just take that I'd still be blocking with Conclave Cavalier, so I'd still be able to not die. All right, actually, you know what? Even though Bond of Flourishing gains three life, I think I maybe just don't have time to play it. I'm going to take out my Bond of Flourishings. And I'm going to get the extra Paradise Druid and Knight of Autumn back in here. So close. How can we put one of these cards back? They're all so good. They mulliganed a lot. So we're going to have six cards. I think my opponent's at five cards. Four cards. It's not very many. Yeah, they could still Ember Cleave. Tilt. You can save one creature. Oh my gosh, they're gonna choose the wrong one. They chose the wrong one. Are kidding me? It's, it's easy. You save the Knight of the Ebon Legion. That thing has Death Touch. What, what are you doing? I saved the Knight of the Ebon Legion. They could have won this. They would have saved Knight of the Ebon Legion, and if I didn't draw... If I didn't draw that glass casket, like Knight of the Ebon Legion would have won that.
Two and one. Well, we drew the glass casket, so we would have been fine. But they just they chose the wrong card. Oh wait, it wouldn't have saved it anyway, though, would it? So they they had to just activate Knight of the Ebony Legion. You're right. okay. Never mind, because it, it would have been just a two three. So actually, the knight would have died if they Ember Cleave the knight. So actually, no, they they yeah, my block was just great. They had to they had to activate knight and then let their three one die. So yeah, they were just in a lot of trouble. Never mind. Yeah, the forest land art is really nice. I like this plains land art too. I like that plains art. That looks really cool. Reminds me of Iowa, where I was born. Just the farmland. We're playing against Jeskai. I play this thing that doesn't die to Clarion. Yeah, I really like the card styles. that back. What are you doing? Take him on Cavalier. Uh, I should have played Questing Beast. I should have played Questing Beast. Wow. And a castle? Alright, so obviously, like, this... This Night of Autumn play cost me... This... This one here. By... I used the Night of Autumn to destroy... The Prison Realm. And then they had a Fire Zone Invention, plus tons of stuff, and I should have saved... Night of Autumn. I was too hasty with that. That cost me this game. They did have a second fires, that is true. So maybe, I guess it looks like it probably would not have mattered. They just kind of had it all. That was two really good discards though, picking up Sphinx and Castle. That was really nice. Hey, Zutvar. Come on, draw creatures. Creatures, creatures. <laughs> so.
So do I want all of that stuff? Do I want devout decree? Do I want tribunal? I don't want those cards. Clarion's so good. Can they just not have multiple Clarions? Or any Clarions? That would make life easier. No, I'm not going to play their... Yeah, I thought about Return to Nature. Not going to play them, though, also, because we have Knight of Autumn and Conclave Tribunal. We have we have eight cards that can kill Fire's Invention. And they get rid of Fire's Invention, at least. So we're just going to go with those. Gideon dodges Clarion. This is a very good hand for us. So if we, if we lose this one, that will mean either we drew poorly or the opponent drew very well. So this is a good hand. Why do they always have to have so many Clarions? Just always infinite Clarions. I believe in you, friend. Has anyone ever played against Jeskai where they didn't have Clarion? <laughs> I mean, last match they only had... Last game they only had two. The match we played earlier they had four. Alcator, thank you so much for the sub. Our first sub of the day. Getting there. Thank you so much. Your light will cleave the darkness. But Gideon's putting in a ton of work for us. Could have gone lifelink. I chose indestructible because we saw quest uh, justice strike. Uh, 
last game. Whoa. We didn't play a single enchantment last game. No, we played the Great Henge. Never mind. I was thinking that we didn't get to play the Great Henge because we had one in hand, but we did play one. Well, you, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, they could have responded to Gideon with it, but that doesn't mean they necessarily would have. Or at least they, you know, like some people just let that go and maybe think that we're going to choose Lifelink because that's the, that's like the normal thing you'd want to choose. But I guess then the B still Lifelinks itself. I don't know. You would think that they would respond to it, but some people just kind of forget and think that they don't have to and that they have more time. And so I just went with the Indestructible. Yeah, Gideon was awesome there. Well, you're just talking about a couple of decks. Yeah, Kendis, the decks that you're talking about are decks that just have main deck Gideon and, like, nothing else, and they're just expecting Gideon to win all the games on its own. And Gideon's not a good enough card for that. But as a sideboard card that you bring in in specific matchups, it can be very effective. I play Conclave Cavalier, Teferi bounces it, and it's at two loyalty, and then and we didn't really accomplish anything. If I attack with Paradise Druid, whenever they, they want to bounce with Teferi, their Teferi does die. And so we at least accomplish something. And then we'd be replaying the Cavalier the next turn, kind of anyway. Coil hurts. tough to win. I got a lot of cards over there still. We just got some more lands. I don't think we're winning this. And the answer is nope, we are not winning this. the token stand by and watch this might be a bad idea
It's my only option to try to stay alive. Try this. If that was an untapped land, we could have activated castle. Yeah. If it was an untapped land, I could have activated castle. And tribunaled. I've done the hero thing before. So obviously, they're going to bounce Tribunal, get back Cavalier, discard a whole bunch of stuff. I've got time. Only two cards. Two and two. That was not a good mulligan. Mulliganing down to five lands and Cavalier of Dawn. <laughs> five lands in my most expensive card. Not a good uh, mulligan. I guess I could have gone to five, but... Oh, well. They had a great hand. GG's. All right, so last match, let's see if we can finish off three and two. All right, so is this Rakdos or Jund? Best case scenario is they don't kill the questing beast right here and we get to play the Great Henge. And then the Great Henge can help us play into a really long game. I don't want to see Mayhem Devil, obviously. Alright, well no Great Henge for us. So it looks like just Rakdos. Not Jund. So the next set is called Ikoria. Lair of Behemoths. I forgot about that. Because, yeah, there's Core 2020, Core 2021, and the, the new Zendikar, Zendikar Rising. Which, honestly, I think it's a little bit early to go back to Zendikar already. You know, like, we just had Battle for Zendikar, and that was not a very well received set. Yeah, Knight of Autumn and Conclave Tribunal. You have you have six things in the main that destroy an oven. All 
All right, so basically all of those cards are good. We just have to make sure we have enough card advantage with a bunch of removal and enough creatures really still to support a claim contender. We probably don't have the ability to play something here. Like we probably don't have the ability to play like this whole removal suite, right? We can cut those. We can cut that. I basically have to take out Paradise Druid if I want to play all of those. Nice, Radical Guru, cool. Kind of trimming some of the removal. I guess we. I don't think we have room for to play everything. Yeah, I do think the Abzan Rampage deck can do well. Um, that and Abzan Hero were the two decks that I like a lot. Um, but yeah, I think I think I would I would probably change up the Abzan Rampage deck some. Like I don't think I would play. I could probably want to play the White Enchantment. Um, so I would have rather had the, the interaction than the Paradise Druids. If I knew I was going to have a bunch of lands also. Yeah, it's Mothering Tithe. I think you want more... More like Othakaya, Realm Cloak Giant, Vraska Golgari Queen, that kind of stuff. What? I thought they were gonna sacrifice the Mayhem Devil so I don't get to scry. But thank you, because I did not want that card. So they have another Mayhem Devil that can pick off this Paradise Druid with me playing that. The reason to play it is to make to try to turn on Castle Art and develop faster. I would do want to wait till I draw a knight and try to be able to play the knight and acclaimed contender in at the same turn. I also don't know why they're not attacking with Cauldron Familiar. Oh, well, I guess this turn that makes sense because they're going to sacrifice that. No, because then they still bring back Cauldron Familiar. I don't know. I don't know why they're not attacking with Cauldron Familiar. All right, even though Claim Contender doesn't get anything, I'm going to play it now because next turn I'll have six mana and then the Great Henge costs six mana. So next turn we'll be able to play the Great Henge if they do not remove my Contender. Hey, Necrolepsy. Yep, having a great day. And 
of course, the Greyhenge can cancel out this damage. <clears throat> From the familiar. Normally I cast Flower here to get a land out of the deck, but we already know that my bottom card's a, a Plains. Like, let's say we just go grab a Plains, we're basically just taking the land out of the bottom of the library. I'm going to shuffle it anyway, you know, because... We seem to be in a very... Very land-heavy part of the deck. Looks like they're going to win this one. So I want to cut Paradise Druid and play and play the removal spells instead, especially if it's kind of a big if, but if if I know if I know I can just hit land drops like this, I was I was worried about that. I was worried about taking out Paradise Druid and then and then being stuck on lands, but, but yeah, with Mayhem Devil and everything, I'm gonna I'm gonna board out Paradise Druid for game three and put in the extra removal spells that I didn't play. Glass Caskets, the Tribunal, and the Return to Nature. Those would all have been much better cards. Um, then Druid. down to 20 creatures. Um, no, probably be, I'm not sure, Kendis. Uh, I would think more planar cleansings than, than time wipes. I think maybe like three and three or something like that, as far as main deck. I mean, after sideboarding, they may be able to have four of both. Definitely four planar cleansings, at least after sideboarding, if not, if not four planar cleansings in the main. So still no removal spells. I would think at least three planar cleansings in the main. I think like like three and one. And then probably like three time wipes. Also. Yeah, yeah, time wipe is awesome with Gadwick and Brazen Barber. Especially Gadwick. Pretty awesome.
A little worried about that. Saw all the removal spells there. Gonna let me kill Chandra. Cool. So attempting to play the Great Henge first. Double Mayhem Devil. Yuck. You get to just do five damage in pings. They, they shouldn't be activating this right now. They need to be doing it during combat, right? So they can block with those two creatures first and then sacrifice them. What are you doing? Why are they doing all that damage to me? Like they're they're dead. I gotta wipe my battlefield. Not to do damage to me. You gotta kill the Tristani and then start killing everything else. Uh, so they could have killed. They could have killed the Tristani and dealt one damage to a one-one, and then I sack that thing, and then they get to do two damage to the two-two, and so I would have had. I would have had a three-three. I would have had a 3-3 three, three and two 2-2s two, and a 1-1. One, one. And they would have had two Mayhem Devils. So... Yeah, I would have had three damage that could have gotten through, and they were at four. Okay, so anyway, there we go. There's, there's, yeah, just thinking about that. So there's Selesnya Knights. Um, fun deck to play, you know, something a little different in the metagame. You know, you don't really see decks like this too much. You don't really see Conclave Cavalier decks, but the Cavaliers were really good in those games. They were very awesome. And, you know, good old 3 2, three, two record. 
nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, let's see. The, the two Gideons were awesome against the Jeskai deck in the sideboard. Um, the Cavaliers from Jeskai Fires were a problem. That's just, that's pretty difficult. I liked having all the glass caskets. They were really good. Um, but uh, there we go. All right, so that's Lesnia Knights. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And, of course, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. Hope you do both of those. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.